Phew. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Brian. So hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, I, I haven't actually taught in this room for a while. I was just saying to Jane that I used to teach first years or second years in here. I can't remember, but it brings back some fond memories. Yeah. <laughs> Not. Um, OK, so I'm going to give you a mini lecture today on um, what I've called Disciplined M Health Entrepreneurship. Disciplined Entrepreneurship is a, it's a process from MIT which is basically helps um, people develop startups, and you know, Brian will be familiar with this. He's attended a few of my talks before, so I'll ask Brian not to answer any questions when I'm asking you to answer questions. Um, uh, but um, yeah, so the main premise, I suppose, is uh, trying to solve the problems of the customer first and then develop your app second, which is perhaps the other way around. So how many people knew that the word entrepreneurship was developed by an Irishman? Hands up. One. Well, there you go. you have learned something new today. So the word entrepreneurship was developed by an Irishman. Uh, his name was Cantillon. He uh, was born in Kerry, and he wrote a book uh, which was basically uh, called the Essay on General Commerce and Trade, which was one of the founding books on economics. And originally it was published, actually after he died, it was published in French because he, he moved to France. He was actually an Irish French citizen. And I think he wrote the book around 1735, if I remember. But he basically defined entrepreneurs, the word entrepreneur is actually you know, from a French word, which is entreprendre, which means undertake, and essentially uh, define them as being these business people who uh, undertake risk. So um, there's a definition there, I'm not going to read it out, but just an interesting fact that the word uh, spans back to uh, an Irish origin. So um, essentially, the process which I've been starting to teach now in NUI Gore for the past year is all about developing entrepreneurship skills. And we often think of uh, entrepreneurs as being you know, there's some kind of innate genes or there's something that people are born with or that, you know, it's something that um, not everybody has. And to a certain extent, there is a little bit of that. There are certainly talents that people have that you, you could argue are strengths that help them to become more entrepreneurial. However, balanced with that, there is actually a set of skills people can develop and can learn and there's a process you can work through, and especially for, you know, engineers and scientists uh, and, uh, you know, people in the medical area who are used to, to process. I think knowing that there are actually skills you can develop is, um, is something that can maybe at least force more people or, or push more people, people along the path to becoming an entrepreneur. So on the right here, we have uh, this Pirish. Who's the person? Uh, sorry, on the left, uh, uh, we have this Pirish. Who's this person here? Anyone know? Yeah, no, it, it looks like Johnny Depp, but actually it's a lookalike. But uh, um, very good lookalike, actually. <laughs> I tried to avoid using any copyright pictures of Johnny Depp so he wouldn't sue me. Um, <laughs> and on, on, the le on the right we have our, our Navy SEAL. So essentially the idea is you take the spirit of the pirate and you take the skills um, and, and bring those together in, into the ideal combination. So you, you've got somebody who's passionate about being an entrepreneur but doesn't really know what to do next and basically we want to try and, I suppose, give them the skills to do that. Trick question with Johnny Depp. So what do you need? You need your idea or your innovation. So you know, Clyde gave us a fantastic talk there about you know, all of the innovations going on in, in Ireland where people are coming up with these great ideas. They have this you know, technology or whatever. But there is um, something that comes after that, which is then how do you take that idea or innovation and bring it to market? So what's the process from getting your cool technology or your cool um, innovation through to, to, to the customer? And uh, that's the process part. And then, obviously, the team is important as well. You want to have a, a multidisciplinary team. You know, Clyde mentioned the Buy Innovate program, which has been running here at NUI Goy and, and nationwide for six years now. Um, and that really teams up people together. So um, you're taking your techie and your business person and your domain knowledge person and bringing them all together. Um, so that takes planning and work as well. And you know, typically, when you see startups, um, they do suffer from not having that team. You know, they have this techie who doesn't know the business stuff or vice versa. So really that balance is, is quite important. But there's one essential component to have a company. And I've listed a couple of things here. So this is a hands up time again. Uh, I want you to pick which of these things do you think is the most important part for a company. So what's the singular and necessary condition to having a, a company? So is it, should have numbered these, but is it one idea or innovation, two great looking products, three, deep technology and some intellectual property, four, a paying customer, five, a multidisciplinary team, six, having the investment or the runway or the money to make it happen, or seven, business skills. So let's have hands up for number one. Okay, two, 
Do you want to see my next slide? Three. <laughs> Four. Five. Brian was making hand signals, I noticed. Six. And seven. Okay, so majority of you put your hand up for the paying customer. It is actually the single and necessary condition to having a company. No point having a company unless you've got a paying customer. Brian, I don't know what you did there, but uh, either they're a very intelligent audience or you were cheating. I think it's uh, they're a very intelligent audience. <laughs> okay, so paying customer. Okay, so um, key part of, of the talk is don't build the technology for us. You know, validate with the customer, make sure the customer wants what you have and then you can figure out what the technology is that, that solves that. So it's definitely a case of build it and they won't come. You know, I've done this, uh, I've had four startups and I remember one particular one, which I think I've got a screenshot on the next page, uh, where we built the product for us and then tried to figure out who wants it afterwards and that it just doesn't work. So you need to do some segmentation of the markets around your idea or innovation, figure out how big they are, pick the first market to start with. Again, Brian would have seen some of this before. Um, focus on the customer need and then it's very important to describe the persona um, so, you know, for the past um, three and a half days, I've sat through 30, 30 presentations from companies who are pitching for, a, for an accelerator program. And um, often people miss out on the persona. Who's the person who's going to use it in the end of the day? What's the profile of, of that person? And is there a kind of a homogenous, uh, sorry, that's just heterogeneous. That should be a homogenous customer who acquires it in the same way. Um, so basically the same type of customer and they, you, know, you sell it to them in the same way and they use it in much the same way. That's who you sh should be starting off with. Primary market research is the key and then there's a great free book which you can uh, download called Talking to Humans. I know it's hard, I'm an engineer, uh, I can uh, understand it's very difficult to talk to humans but if you're having problems, there's a, there's a book here, Talking to Humans, which gives you some in insights into how to talk to potential customers, figure out what they need, again, be very, uh, I suppose, non-judgmental or not trying to push your idea or innovation onto them, make sure that it fits with their needs and, and their issues before you, before you develop for them. Yeah, so here's, uh, this is a company I was involved in six, seven years ago, and we, you know, we, we had investment, we got TechCrunch coverage, we had a really cool looking product, but no customers. So, um, uh, there's a great book, uh, this is Bill Aulet, who's the uh, writer of this book from MIT, Discipline and Entrepreneurship. Um, for those who are in NUI Galway, you can get this book for free online through our NUI Galway library. Uh, we have online access to it. There's also a new uh, workbook uh, which just came out last month, which I'd highly recommend. And otherwise, you know, it's, um, if you are thinking about going that startup route, this is a great uh, book to help you on that journey. And it's based on this 24-step process. So starting down here where the arrow is, you start off with your idea or innovation and you say, okay, who needs it? So you basically brainstorm all the potential markets for that idea or innovation. And nothing too crazy. I mean, there is nothing too crazy. Uh, you should think about all of the different options. Write them all down, then you go through a filtering process, you select the top five to ten, you then further filter and choose the beachhead market, which is the one you start off in. So you say, here's the place we want to start off in, here's that homogenous user group, here's the place we think we can actually dominate, and then we can use that market to knock on to some of the other markets we identified earlier on. You define your end user, you size the market, I'm going to give you just some screenshots or some pictures of, of some of these steps, I'm not going to go through them all because there's too many here and I uh, only have two hours to talk, right? So um, we have our persona, we have our core proposition, we have life cycle use case. So you, the, they're essentially broken up into different themes. First theme is who's your customer. The second theme is what can you do for them. Next theme is uh, how do you acquire them and then you move on through, through the various the six um, different themes in, in, in total. So, um, you know, the first one being who's your, who's your customer, it's all about trying to figure out what's the market and who is the typical end user who's, and, and the, you know, the paying customer who's, who's gonna pay for your customer at the end of the day. So I mentioned this stuff in terms of the markets, but it's also very important to do a full persona of, of your customer. So that's both the demographics, you know, the, the, you know, the age, the employment, the salary range, the whatever, but also the psychographics in terms of you know, what, uh, what's their, you know, who are their heroes, what do they like to do, what are their greatest fears, so you're trying to build up this full profile of the person so you know exactly who you're trying to sell to. Uh, you're, you're identifying an end user and then you're also identifying the next 10, 10 users. And you really want to have a strong commitment from these people. You want people who, who say, gosh, I really will buy this. Uh, very willing to hand across cash if, if, if you actually have this particular product. Um, so this is typical sizing for a product. Uh, this is just a, a mock-up, but it's a product called InTouch, which is 
aimed at uh, giving mothers better communication with their babies. So um, for any parents here, here you've probably seen various products to, um, to help you listen to your child's uh, heart rate and you get these little headphones and, and you can record them and so on. Um, but it's still a little bit um, vague in terms of the feedback. And this particular product was essentially a, a monitor that would connect and give you kind of a smart interface that would show you what, uh, you know, how your child was you know, in terms of heartbeat, in terms of uh, mood and so on. But the first step was trying to figure out, well, how many people can you sell to? Because, you know, when you're creating a business, you want to figure out how many customers are there and how much am I going to charge them to give you that overall idea of, of, of the potential market. So, you know, you can do some simple stuff like, for example, in the US there may be 157 women, uh, you know, half the 330 odd population, 6 million pregnant annually, and it's likely you're going to be trying to market this um, product to first-time mothers. So, again, if you've had uh, kids, you, um, unfortunately for the second and third and fourth and fifth uh, and subsequent children, uh, you um, do all the stuff as opposed to the first one, like you will buy these kind of products and then the second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth ones, uh, <laughs> unfortunately don't, don't get those products. So um, I remember getting one of these monitors for our first child and uh, I'm not sure what happens after that. But um, anyway, the, the, in the end of the day, you are trying to sell to a particular customer. You want to get those numbers. These are the things that are important to them. And we know that there's two million uh, potential people buying it. But that's not enough. You want to get to how much are they actually going to pay for it and how much is that in terms of dollars per year. So here's a different example. This is, uh, again, another uh, uh, pseudo idea. But the product is called LiveDoc, essentially providing reassurance to parents when they need it. So again, parents uh, will know that you know, your kid has um, something and you're, you know, you kind of think it's probably nothing, but you want to have it checked out. So you, you, know, you want that reassurance whenever you need it. It's a lot of hassle to have to bring them to the doctor. You have to take them at the day off school or whatever. You just want to be able to fire up some kind of app and say, you know, this is this and this and this, and you know, should, are they OK? And then, yes or no, you can t have another decision point. So this was the, um, the premise. We have some numbers. US population, uh, somebody is sick. They are internet users, uh, target towards mothers. They're college educated. Uh, they have an income in this range. And then what kind of numbers do you get out of that? And it turns out the number at the bottom, which uh, feeds out in that six million dollars, an estimate of four consultations per year, uh, eight dollars per consultation gives you 200 million dollars a year. So you're trying to get to some kind of size. I know it's not exact, but it's better to be in range, you know, rather than saying, is it two million, is it two billion, is it 20 million? You want some kind of range to know where it is potentially be at if, if you actually got there. So the second then is what can you do for your customer? And uh, you know, it starts off with the life cycle use case. How do they find out about your product? How do they use it? How do they uh, re you know, uh, upgrade, re uh, resell, whatever? How do they tell their friends about it? So you're thinking end to end about what the person would do with your product. You define some high level specifications. Uh, that could be through a little brochure, which I'll show you in a minute. The value proposition, uh, the, um, the core thing that you have that nobody else has that you can kind of protect and build moats around and then your competitive position in terms of the priorities of the user. So again, going back to InTouch, you're trying to show the value proposition in terms of what's come before and where you are now. Now, typically that's done in some kind of metrics. You're trying to say, yeah, we've saved you 25% time or we've saved you X amount of money. This one is a little bit more of a qualitative uh, value proposition because it is more based on feeling and uh, you know, reassurance and uh, peace of mind, which is harder to quantify. But uh, you can see basically the as this stage in terms of our uh, audio recording devices from Graco or you know, Intuition or your ultrasound or consulting Dr. Google to what you may show a person with this interface. I've lost, uh, Clyde stole my smiley faces. It's supposed to be two smiley faces here. But anyway, the idea is that you would see um, something on, on, on the picture here which indicates the, you know, uh, what kind of um, form your, your, your baby is in based on whether you're reading or relaxing or listening to music or whatever. Now this is just kind of, I suppose, giving a person an idea of what they would get and that there's some kind of you know, reinforcement of what's behind it, that there's some kind of data analytics or uh, IP behind that that is providing an accurate um, reading as well. So that's kind of the before and after state. Um, and here's another one, again, a very simple way to test your premises to develop a minimal viable product. Now there's two different types of MVPs. One is called the MVP, minimal viable product. It's kind of the, the, the most basic thing you can make to show somebody what it would look like. There's another version called the minimal viable business product, um, which is basically the one that a person would hand across cash for. So you're, you're, you're basically presenting a product to Brian, for example, and he's saying here's 10 euro. 
flurry like that, and that's an even better validation of what you have. Well, so the main point here is that you can actually validate if your thing is good or not without having to spend you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of euro on your product by mocking up something. So you can answer a question for $8 as opposed to answering it for $80,000 uh, and, and showing that to customers and getting a feel for is this uh, what they're interested in. And you can tell them that you know, this features your video chat, your text chat, your image up uploading, and you know, it's cheaply done through a, through a, through a wireframe. So uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I'm giving two workshops on this next week for those who are in Galway. Uh, no, not next week, the week after next in the Porter Sheds. 27th of June, the first part, which is who your, who's your customer, and 28th of June, which is what can you do for them. So um, you can just go to portershed.com, sign up for free there if you're interested in that, and happy to take any questions from you all. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>